fraction. You get this? And here, we want a solution for both of these together. Therefore, you have to start from B, right? You add them together. You get the idea, guys? Okay, then. Oh, by the way, on your homework, they will, whenever you have and in between, this is called conjunction. When you have two inequalities with and in between, the whole thing is called conjunction. When you have, when you have or in between these two inequalities, it's called disjunction. So you may have to remember that, okay? On your homework, they will use these words, so you have to know what they mean. Con and this, right? Conjunction, disjunction. So kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, conjunction means you have what in between? What word are we using? And. Disjunction means we're using the word or, okay? Very good. So that you, right, well, go ahead and try this one. What if I have this? So for and, what would the, okay, this is my shortcut. I mean, shortcut. This is my uh, sketch work. Okay, so what would this look like? Go ahead, everybody try. This is my sketch. What would actually be my solution if this was conjunction and if this was my disjunction? Go ahead, everybody try. Okay, who thinks they know what the solution for conjunction looks like? Yeah. I think it's a real solution. Yeah. It means, is there any place where they overlap? No. So the answer is no real solution or no solution, right? Because we're talking about real numbers. Would you not agree? Right? What about for this one? What about for this junction? So for this, since there's no overlap, the answer is what? No solution. So how do you grab that? You just grab the number line and put, put no shading on it. You don't put any shading. Does that make sense? Okay, what about for disjunction? What do you do? What do you think for disjunction? What do you think the solution of this disjunction look like? <coughs> disjunction means you add the solution, uh, include the solution of both. Liam? Meaning? It looks like there's an X in the middle, and then there's a sign over here and a sign over there, and then you get a number on the other side. Oh, yeah, so if the numbers is A and B, what would that look like? Okay, there'd be uh, A, uh, X, and B, and then there would be a equaling uh, X. There would be like a A is greater than X. And no, X is going to be greater less than A. Oh, yeah. Or, because since it's disjunction, or, that's right. So, Soy, what does the graph look like? What, what would the graph look like if I were to graph that for disjunction? No, just the graph. What does the graph of this disjunction look like? You know how we did these? What does the graph of this look like for this disjunction? Anybody? For disjunction, we want to include the solution of this and this together. Or maybe it's just too easy. Or wouldn't it be the same? Right? <laughs> wouldn't the graph be the same? Right? Guys, you, you add the solution of this plus the other, right? It's the same graph. Yeah, you were thinking, maybe, yeah, maybe I asked to, yeah, you guys were thinking too hard. It's just the same graph, right? For this one. Isn't that right? There's, okay. But for this one, conjunction, because there isn't any place where they overlap, we just, just draw a number line without any shading, right? You just blank. Okay, if you want to be more clear, just write no solution, right? Yeah? So is everything a overlap between solutions? For conjunction, yes. Right, for conjunction. If there's no overlap, then there is no solution. So disjunction can they overlap as well? Yeah, look. For disjunction, didn't they overlap over here? Look, yeah. for disjunction. So we have to include all these things, though. Do you see the difference? Right here for this junction, you include between A and B. Here, you don't include it between A and B for and, for conjunction, right? Because we have to look at where they overlap only. Right? Paula, do you see where they overlap right here? Isn't this place where they overlap? So that's, that's your solution. Right? Here. Isn't this where they overlap, guys? So that's why that's your solution for conjunction. Does that make sense? Well, try this then. <coughs> Now I have something open circle, some of them closed. Okay, so let's, can you see the, can you do this one? Go ahead, everybody try. So for conjunction, who knows the solution? What do, would the solution be? Okay, what would the graph look like? Emily? You shade the middle of A and B. What about the endpoints? 
Which one is going to be solid? B, which one can be open? A, that's correct. How many forgot this picture? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, now what about then, Chris? What about for the other one? What would the solution of the other one be look like? Will, will look like? B. So I want to include the both of these inequalities, right? Solution of both of these inequalities. What's the, what's the solution? Yes, Liam. Would that be the entire graph? Yeah, it'll be all real numbers, guys. Oh. Right? Does that make sense? Would you not agree? Because even though it's open circle at A, well, the other one covers it. Does that make sense for or? And here it's already uh, uh, solid, so it doesn't matter, right? It's going to be included. Question? For B? Yeah. Because it's in right at B. This is a solution for the one that's going to the left. But the one that's going to the right, it covers, it overlaps at B. That's why it's, it, does, that, does that make sense? That's why it's, good. So we're going to now talk about the main topic of the day, absolute value. Okay, you will see how they connect. You will see why we talked about all these conjunction, disjunction, the graphs of inequalities and so forth in a minute. Can somebody give me, first of all, the solution of this absolute value? Well, it's an equation, isn't it? You have an equation. So left side equals the right side. So somebody tell me the solution for this. Yes? X equals to 3 or negative 3 is correct. You have two solutions. And sure, it's very interesting you use the word or. So this is a what? Conjunction or disjunction? It's a disjunction, turns out. Okay, so when you have equal sign with an absolute value, you get a disjunction every time. Because it's something or the other, right? Now, what would this look like as a graph on a number line? It's very simple to graph. You just put two, what? Yeah. Two solid circle at negative three and three. That's exactly right. So there you go. Right? And this is a disjunction, like I said. Does it make sense to write and in the middle? Could I write as a solution as x equals negative three and x equals three? Can a number be three and negative three at the same time? Not possible. That's why we use the or, you see? So it turns out that if you have absolute value of some I mean, absolute value of x equals some number, you get a disjunction every time. Okay, this junction. You use the word or in the middle. Is that okay? All right. Now let's get a little bit more interesting. What if I give you? Can, can somebody guess what I'm going to do next? Instead of using equal sign, I'm going to use an inequality. Is correct. So what would this mean? First of all, before we talk about exactly what it means, I want to talk about some of the possible solutions. Meaning, what can I plug in here? So that it comes out to be, what can I plug in for x so that it comes out to be true? Can somebody give me some possible solution? What can I plug in x and get less than 3? Sam? Negative 1. Negative 1 will work. Did you say negative 1? Negative four. Oh, negative 4. Would negative 4 work? No, it would not. Yeah, look, plug in negative 4. <laughs> yeah, if you do the absolute value of negative 4, you get what? 4. That won't work. Who can tell me? What will work? Yes. Negative 2 will work, definitely, right? What's the absolute value of negative 2? That is 2, so it's th 2 less than 3. Yeah. Can somebody give me some other numbers that will work? Paula? Negative, one. negative 1 will work, right? What's the absolute value of negative 1, guys? 1. Well, if negative 1 works, could I plug in 1? Yeah. yeah. If negative 2 works, could I plug in 2? Yeah. What about uh, negative 3? Does that work? No, because negative 3, if you plug it in, you get 3, right? Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 is not less than 3, is it? 3 is equal to 3, not less than 3. Uh, what about 2.9? Would that work? Yes, it will. What about negative 2.9 then? Okay, what about 3.1? No. Okay, then what would then... Okay, so I, have, I, I wrote some of these possible solutions, a bunch of these. Can somebody then think of... What would then... Uh, the graph of this inequality look like? On a number line, of course. We're just using one variable. On a number line, what do you think? One person see it? What would these, okay, by the way, how many solutions do I have? Infinitely many, there are a whole bunch of them. Okay, now, what would they look like then? If I were to, because I cannot possibly write them all, right? Because there are infinitely many of them. So I have to use it, I have to represent it by using 
graph. Okay, so anybody see what they might look like? Soy? Uh, open circle at three. Going left. Okay, if you did that, then if you have open circle at three and goes left, that would include negative four, negative five, negative six, oh, negative ten. Negative oh, negative two? Are you sure? And negative two? Two point nine? Okay, you're close. Uh, who wants to? Yeah, Aubrey. Open circle and negative three. Open circle and negative three. That's it. Wait, what? Uh, is that it? Then no, what? No, I mean like kind of this. Oh, two where? That's exactly right. Wouldn't it be something like so? There are infinitely many solutions, right? So you're right. Wouldn't you get this graph, right? It's every number between negative three and three. Yeah. So you only get a closed circle if the lines intersect above that number. Oh, for this case, you would get closed circle if it was less than or equal to three. Then the three is part of a solution. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, have we seen a graph that looks something like this before? Let's see if we can connect. What we, yeah, when have you seen this? What Was it on a conjunction? Look at your notes. Was it under conjunction or was it under disjunction? It was under? Conjunction, conjunction wasn't it? Okay, because if you had disjunction, all the disjunction had like at least something, it, it either goes to the right forever, to the left forever, or it goes both ways forever. So this is a conjunction. So you have to use the word and. Now, what does it mean? Who can, let's see. This really means... When you had conjunction, means you had two what? Two. Not an equation, but two inequalities, right? So, so guess what? The absolute value of x less than three really is a shortcut of writing two. Two inequalities. You see? Look. So what does this really mean? It means. This. Doesn't this really mean, I, I even have a picture. Doesn't this really mean x greater than negative 3 and where did I get the and from? Yeah. Because it's conjunction, it was where they overlap, right? Doesn't this really mean x will divide x less than 3 and absolute, I mean a, x greater than negative 3 and x less than 3? Right? You see how they kind of connect? So the absolute value of x less than 3 is a, really a shortcut. It's really a shortcut of writing these inequalities, two inequalities. Does that make sense? Guys, right, so do you see that? Right? Isn't that how we get it? Because so you have these two inequalities, you know, their overlap is this, right? Every number between negative 3 and 3. Do you get the idea? Okay? So if this is true, let's see if you can figure this out. Oh, let's write this down. When you have, so let me kind of summarize this. This is the main point here. When you have... And inequality with absolute value, it really means, it really is a shortcut of writing what? Two inequalities. That's right. It's really the systems of these inequalities that you get when you have the absolute value. Now, is it going to be always and every time? No, sometimes it will be and, in other words, sometimes it will be conjunction, sometimes it will be <coughs> disjunction. Okay, so, but it, 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 it does represent two inequalities. Every time you have an absolute value of x equals, to, I mean, right? Absolute value of x with some inequality equals some number, so forth. Okay, go ahead and write it down, I'll give you time. What? I didn't hear you. Say it louder. <laughs> That's exactly what you're going to do, guys. When these absolute value of uh, inequality like, gets a little bit more interesting, you can't just graph it just by looking at it like these. You have to separate them into two inequalities and graph it that way. Does that make sense? That's why we're doing all this. You got it. That's excellent. That's excellent. So when, we get, when, when this thing gets more interesting, like I said, you have to separate them into two inequalities, and you know whether it be conjunction or disjunction. I'll tell you what, when. Okay? And you have to graph them separately that way. Okay, otherwise, it's very hard to graph them just by looking at it. Very good, very good. So now, what, so let's do. But before we get there, let's do some simple ones. Okay, I have absolute value of x greater than three. 